My name is Egon Oewe and I think all of us have been in a situation in which we had to extract a tooth with a problem and replace it with an implant. What is the most predictable protocol we apply on these cases? Let's have a look together. We actually know now that it is a mistake to try to fill the extraction socket completely with the implant body. So we moved away from the implant size that really filled the complete extraction socket. So we need to keep space for the buccal bone and we have to respect that space. Another important statement I can make is that the provisional is essential for shaping a soft tissue emergence. We have to do everything to transfer this emergence to the final restorations. And we have to know a way how to avoid a collapse of the soft tissue envelope we developed with this provisional. So we have to know how to avoid what you see happening here on this slide. One of the treatment goals besides preservation of crestal bone is also the shaping of the palatal area of the, the tooth. That should be done as accurate as the buccal portion. Cement retention is a real danger and we should be aware of that. By copying the shape of the provisional that has been extensively tested in the mouth of the patient onto the final restoration, we have full control of the soft tissue contour around the implant supported restoration that mimics the root and the shape of a natural tooth. So we create really the illusion of a tooth and I hope you join with me the advances we went through in this field of post-extraction implant-supported restorations. For more education programs, visit the Guide Institute at www.guidedental.com.